and you are all very welcome to a very special place. We're in the Italian Dolomites for one of the most beautiful bike races on earth. The UCI Enduro and E Enduro World Cups from Val di Fassa Trentino. The opening stage of the race was Titans. Just under three kilometers of some of the finest trail known to humankind. A flat out off camber charge across the piste changed complexion to super steep technicality once it hit the woods. It was time to forget all the nerves, all the tension. Stage one, was go. Just hands are so sore. It's so rough, like taking the hits, like trying to avoid holes, but sometimes you just have to hit them. Nuga Karim went into an early lead ahead of Rocky Mountain Race faces Andrian Lanfia Nadeau. Gloria Scarzi had slid out in a turn for a rocky start to her day. Super slippery. I had a little crash on the flat corner. I think so I found a good speed after. Trek Factory Racing's Hattie Harnden was also in the wars. A flip over the bars on Titans landed her with bruised ribs and into a world of pain. Amazingly, she still managed to cross the line in seventh. Pivot Factory Racing's Morgan Shaw took over the lead, having arrived in Italy firmly in the hunt to take her first overall title. But the woman she had to beat went faster again. Lapierre Zip Collective's Isabel Cordurier established an early lead in the race by some five seconds. Char's teammate Matt Walker, a fourth place finisher here back in 2021, led the way early on in the elite men's race. Yeti Fox's Slavomir Lukasic had an off. The winner of the last round, Reese Werner, went third fastest. Likewise, the series leader, three times a winner here in the past, Richie Rood, was second. Let's go, Richie! Go, Richie! Six seconds faster and into an early lead, though, was France's flat pedal wizard, Alex Rudeau. Yeah, pretty hard for the arm. I don't do a lot of mistakes. Yeah, keep it like this. After the first stage of the day, then Isabel Cordurier led the way from Morgan Shar and Melanie Pujam. Barbara Wojcia from the Czech Republic was up in ninth, mixing it with the factory riders. In the elite men's race, Rudo led the way from Rude. Werner was third, and on his first race back from becoming a new father, Zach Johansson was in tenth. The Enduro World Cup riders would face a 41 km long course with five stages and a total of 2,800 vertical metres of descending. The E Enduro course would add two power stages and a second run through the final stage to add up to a total of 49 kilometres over eight stages. To catch up on all things E Enduro, stay tuned at the end of this highlights package for our coverage of all things electric.
Infinity back end. At four kilometers long, it wasn't exactly never ending, but it did feature a heartbreaking climb alongside some superb Dolomite single track. Mate, giving it everything, but feels like I'm going nowhere. Gaia Tormena, a UCI world champion and cross country eliminator, had done some pads for the weekend and was cracking on. Pretty good, better than expected. I don't have any more uh, the legs, uh, the, the arms, I'm just riding mentally. Cheered on by her home fans, she was ninth on stage two. At the front, the UK's Chloe Taylor was on another good run of form. She was third ahead of Isabel Cordurier. Temperatures increased as the afternoon wore on. The brutal climb on stage two was proving to be far from the riders' favourite. I love this place, but this climb... Please, no more! It's so long. Yeah. <laughs> and very hard. Not the climb, but after, it was very, very hard to push again, push again. Uh, at the end of the stage, so... I crashed just before. Today I think I'm a bit tired because it's already the second crash. Anyone who has bruised ribs before will tell you that even getting air in can be eye-wateringly painful. Hattie Horndon is made of some kind of cement that is somehow very good at bike racing, however. Against all odds, she won the stage. I think that's one of the most difficult stages I've ever done. So physical. And like so fast, but there were so many people on that climb, it was so good. Like just heckling you and yeah, just trying to make you not stop. <laughs> Corderier hung on to her race lead. Oh man, that's relentless. Everyone's talking about the big climb, but there's so many small climbs as well. It's like empty the tank and you still need to keep digging, 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 digging. <laughs> Alex Rudeau shipped 19 seconds on stage two and finished 10th. Ahead of him, there was a battle of the Kiwis. I'm um, quite surprising to be honest. I don't know, just digging deep out there, trying to not have fun in a way kind of thing. Like if you're having fun, you're probably not trying hard enough. So I don't know, just digging in and trying to force a bit of flow out here. Matt Walker just nudging out Specialized Racing's Charlie Murray to finish third on the stage. <laughs> Jesse Melamed was ahead of Limbo for Canyon Collective. stages ever like pedaling on the top fire road you do another little climb you do another fire road climb before you even get to the minute long just straight up and then you have to ride a bike but out front there was no stopping the big man Richie Rood took the stage win uh, I think Reese crashed up top and I caught him on the climb and then followed him for Another minute and it was kind of weird, like, I didn't know whether I should go around them or not, but it was good to just take a chill, but, you know, I mean, rode the bottom pretty slow, but, you know, held on, so that's what counts. He now led on the road ahead of Walker and Melamed.
Electric Line was the third stage. Only Titans was a steeper test, with pretty much the entirety of its 2.2 kilometers being amongst the trees and littered with rock and root alike. Barbara Wojcia was added again on stage three. She finished the stage in fifth. <laughs> Gloria Scarzi was refusing to back down. Her performance in finale outdoor region had been nothing short of stellar, and she was out to back it up. She was third on electric line. <laughs> Melanie Pujan was riding well for We Ride Fulger factory team. She finished the stage second. Isabel Corderier was peerless amongst the trees. She won the stage to increase her grip on the lead of the bike race. <laughs> Canyon Collective's Dimitri Tordo slid off the boardwalk and got tangled in the safety netting. Melamed, again, was third. <laughs> Whilst Richie Rude was clubbed back into second place by a resurgent Alex Rudeau, who took the stage win. Isabel Cordurier then led from Morgan Shard by just seven seconds. Melanie Pujan was third. Behind them, Scarzi was up two spots and into fifth and was champing at the bit for the second half of the race. Likewise, Wojcia was up four spots into eighth. Rude now led from Melamed from Rudeau. 13 and a half seconds covered the sharp end of things. Whilst at the other end of the top 10, both Slavomir Lukasic and Rhys Werner were up five spots each and heading towards the front of the race. It was time to head to the roof of the world. Tutti Frutti has become one of the world's most famous trails and once again back into showcase enduro mountain bike racing at its very, very best. Yeah, that Tutti Frutti, is, it's a good stage, but it's, it's hard when your eyes go like that, but I enjoyed it. Noga Karem on her new comment style went fastest of the elite women to begin with. The first woman to displace her was Melanie Pujan, as the wind started to crease on the exposed ridgeline section. Wrong, very wrong. I would like to win the stage, but it's all. <laughs> but when you're riding in a bit of form, sometimes the right stages arrive at the right time. Morgan Shar loves the longer, tougher tests, and she went fastest on Tutti Frutti. It was good. I like finally had my head in the right place. This morning I was like riding good, but I was just yeah, too much going on in my head. Yeah, it's like perfect conditions right now. Really physical, but I pushed really hard, so yeah, I'm happy and crazy. It's full gas on the top, but also very tricky with a lot of hard turns, so definitely just trying to have some good speed and have fun. Cordurier was third, which was enough to give Char the lead of the race. A 
just had a chain off during the last uh, pedaling part, so I pushed my bike, just jump on the bike because it's pedal and it came on. So thankfully I can continue like that, but I think I lost a bit. Our Bay of Foxes Martin Mays was having a miserable time off it out on the stages. A puncture in the longest test of the day did nothing to turn that around. But he wasn't the only one. The overall champ Jesse Melamed was struggling with arm pump. He dropped two spots on the long stage. Richie Rude from the lead of the race suffered a flat on Tutti Frutti, a stage which had traditionally been such a happy hunting ground for the American, turned on its master. Charlie Murray, by contrast, was having a stormer and led the way on the mammoth stage before being pipped back into second place by Matt Walker. Yeah, didn't hold anything back because I know I'm pretty close, so I was just like, well, if there's any way to make a bit of time or like just give it all, it's that one. So yeah, dug pretty deep, saw a bit of red and had a bit of fun. It would turn out to be Pivot Factory Racing's first elite men stage win of 2023. And what a place to do it. Tutti Frutti had injected a huge dollop of chaos in the elite men's race, perhaps more so than any other stage this season. Matt Walker now led, but Alex Rudeau was in second, having survived mechanical maladies by 12 and a half seconds, and Richie Rude was now 16 seconds behind his fourth win in the Val de Fassa Trentino. Melamed was fourth, and Murray was fifth. Morgan Shaw was out front by just seven tenths of a second from Isabel Cordurier. Melanie Pujan was third, but the superb Hattie Harnden in fourth, riding through the pain barrier. Just one stage remained. Chiazades. At just 1.2 kilometers in length, it was a short but technical test. It's uh, it's been a tough day. I think like the altitude, you definitely just feel a little bit more drained than you normally would. Quite a few broken souls up here. Everyone's been a bit quiet, but uh, yeah, it's been a tough day. Like the intensity's been real high. It's been a long day, but uh, one one last push now, and then we're done. Yeah, last stage of the day, um, we're definitely tired. It's been a pretty burly, burly day out so far. You don't even feel like you're in a race sometimes, like you're just so, so cracked. Yeah, a little bit nervous, a little bit excited. Be nice to lay it on the line and see if we can bump up the ranking a little, but you never know, it's bike racing. I'm stuck between like, kind of ride the best I can and, you know, maybe just be a little cautious, but uh, I know Jesse and he's gonna freaking send it, so it'd be hard to protect the old third spot. It's just all or nothing, really. So my, my plan is like, if he's a second in front, Charlie's a second behind, and this stage is like short, but super intense, and I think it suits me, so I just want to give it everything, and if I throw it away, like, I'm okay with that, but it's racing, like, I just want to go. I'm watching Charlie Murray on YouTube. A little quick refresh on the course report. So nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, it seems, I think there's a little buffer, so just gotta try to be smart with it, um, and not do anything stupid. Pedal hard where it's easy, take a little bit of caution, but not too much caution because that could just go disappear pretty quick. I know the times are super, super close, so basically we have one more stage to push really hard, and then yeah, we'll see. I'm happy with my day so far, so yeah. Just 1200 meters stood between Morgan Shar and another win. Just 1200 meters stood between Matt Walker and his first ever win. Was he about to make it five different winners in five races?
Yeti Fox's early season points leader Bex Barona finished fourth on the stage, just behind the impressive Gloria Scarzi on Canyon Collective Pirelli. Barbara Wojciech was sixth. All eyes were on the challenger. Less than a second has separated them atop Chiazades after the reseeding of the riders in their order on the road. Who would come out on top? Char or Cordurier? Yeah. stage finish we saw a not unfamiliar sight to fans of enduro racing. Champions have the ability to up their games when the big moments present themselves. Isabel Cordurier had dominated on Chiazades, carried speed everywhere and snuck in pedal strokes where others could only dream. She crossed the line nearly eight seconds ahead of a distraught Morgan Shar, who would be forced to settle for second. But it would be Melanie Poujan who would come in third in a Team France 1-2-3 in the overall. It was an insane battle. It's the first time I think I dropped in the last stage with that amount of pressure. I think uh, she pushed me so hard and definitely like uh, never before. And it just shows the uh, amount like, of pressure we have right now to perform at such a level. It's insane and I think it's good for the sport. We have some close battle and it's exciting to watch. <laughs> Jose Borges led the way early in the elite men's race until Charlie Murray came down ahead of him. As ever, Melamed laid it all down. But this time, it wasn't enough to beat Charlie Murray. The battle for second was on. Rude dropped first, followed by Rudeau. Go, Richie, go! Go, Richie! Go, 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 go! go. Hey, Jesse, go, go, go. Come on, 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 As they crossed the line, all eyes looked to the top of the stage. There was one rider left. Matt Walker stood on the verge of a win years in the making. Go, 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 go. Walker took one of the most popular wins in enduro history when he opened his elite men's wins account. Pivot Factory Racing's head Kiwi was more than enjoying his time in the saddle in Val de Fassa Trentino and attacked from top to bottom. A first win, definitely out of the blue. I wasn't really expecting it. I like, I always like the venue here. Um, I know you can't have a bad day when you're riding bikes somewhere like this. So definitely a few things I want to tidy up with my riding, but Man, I just had such a fun day, I like, really can't complain. Even if I came 50th or whatever, I had a sick day out, so I'm stoked. He took his second stage win of the day by 1.3 seconds from Charlie Murray. Matt Walker is a UCI World Cup winner, taking victory ahead of Alex Rudeau and Richie Rude in third. Charlie Murray was fourth, and Jesse Melamed finished behind his title rival Rude in fifth. Isabel Cordurier leads the women's title race by 144 points ahead of Morgan Schaar. 
Third spot goes to Bex Barona, who is just seven points ahead of Harry Harndon, who now has some time to let those ribs heal. The rest of the top 10 are all tightly spaced, with Wojciech now into ninth. In the elite men's race, Richie Rood is top of the heap in the elite men's rankings ahead of the two Canadians, Werner and Melamed. Rudeau leads Murray behind them. It's Booker, Walker, Lukasik, Denio, and Tordo. And as we head into the mid-season summer break, then it is Yeti Fox Factory Race Team who are in control of the team's championship ahead of the Lapierre Zip Collective and Pivot Factory Racing. Aside from a thrilling Enduro World Cup, there was an almighty battle for the E-Enduro World Cup podium places. In a year that has redefined how tough e-bike racing can be, Val de Fassa Trentino would raise the bar even higher. Laura Schall took the win on the opening E-Enduro stage, with Germany's Ines Thomas separating her from her rival Flo Espinera in third. The two title rivals would go on to trade wins on the opening four stages of the day, with only the resurgent race winning Alia Marcellini disrupting their domination with a win on stage two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stage 4 saw disaster for one of mountain biking's greats. Fabian Burrell suffered a puncture on Tutti Frutti and lost bucket loads of time in the process, which was then compounded by missing his start time on Stage 5. Uh, the day was alright, like, I mean, it, it was really high with the altitude. Managing the technicity of the terrain, how loose he was, was, was quite hard. And uh, find my pace through and I, I wasn't like on peak speed like I was on the two other races. The men's e-enduro was barred bar combat high in the Italian Dolomites. The opening five stages saw five different winners. Burrell, Pombo, Gilchrist, Mari and Pigeon all collecting a win apiece. At the same point in the elite women's race, Laura Charles was out in front of Espanera by 14 seconds. Espinera outplaced the Frenchwoman on the last pair of stages, but it was too little too late. Laura Charles took the win in UCI e Enduro World Cup in Val de Fassa Trentino by five seconds ahead of her Chilean rival. Ines Toma was all smiles in third. Today was good for me, the poor stage. At the beginning of the season was the totally nightmare for me. So at this race is one my main goal, like to just uh, take it easy and relax. and. Uh, yeah, I did it pretty well, so I'm quite happy about this because it's uh, not super easy. <laughs> The battle for top spot in the men's had been hotly contested all day, but the most consistent rider had been Kevin Marie. The Lapierre Zip Collective star took victory by 15 seconds from the Spaniard Alex Marin and Hugo Pigeon. Flo Espinera still leads the way in the overall standings, and despite a deflating day in the office, Fabian Burrell maintains his overall points leader's jersey in the men's. The UCI Enduro World Cup will return at the start of September in Ludenville Perigudes in France. Until then, thanks for watching, catch your breath, and we'll see you there. <laughs>